bulbs and it kind of really doesn't matter. But if I wire, say I had 10 of these in series, so positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, right? All these voltages are cumulative. So if I had 10 of these, that'd be 210 volts DC. And if I mixed up one of these backwards at 210 volts DC, we could burn some stuff up, right? That makes a huge difference. So always want to mark the end so you can keep track of it. All right, so what we're going to do now is move this panel over there and slide it into your cooling system. Get one guy on the other side of that, so one of you on each side and kind of guide it down in there. And I need to run the wires out the top before you get too crazy with it. Looks like a good fit, right? So we just need to get these two wires out of here. Got them? Okay. So see, now I can't see the positive down there. So it's probably a good thing I marked this, right? So, let me grab the charge controller. We're going to the solar side of it. Yellow is my positive, so I'll go ahead and connect that. A little tug test to make sure it doesn't pull out. All right, somebody else put the negative. You gonna put the negative side on? Okay. You gonna run it right up into here? Yep. Hold it up in there firmly, like that. Now go ahead and tighten down that screw. So you'll notice I've got clean screwdrivers that I can use, but anytime I'm working in an electrical box, I'm always grabbing these screwdrivers. They're high voltage and it'll keep me from getting shocked. In case I accidentally get in there, and you know how they're kind of tight in there, you can get crossways and accidentally bump two wires or two contacts. These will protect you and keep you from getting shocked. We work with up to a thousand volts DC. Phenomenal. It means it's, it's set to run on a 12 volt battery. But to charge a battery, if my panel only put out 12 volts, would I be able to charge a battery? No, nope. I need to push more down this leg, something like that. And then, what do you think, something like this? That gives us some spare, right? Okay, the cutters are all the way at the back edge of that. There you go. So we'll use these strippers. And actually we can look at it and say, well that's 2.6, and on this side it's 10. So does that one have a 10 on it? Yep. Okay, so we're gonna use 10. So, but we need to strip this down like this so we can reach both battery terminals, right? So the, the trick to this is, you'll put this in the 10. I'm gonna do just a tiny little bit so you can see how to do it and then I'm gonna have you do it. So if I'm gonna strip off enough wire to make it useful, I can pull like this, but I'll probably bop Jonathan in the head, right? Oh, uh. So a cool trick, push my thumb on it. I just use my thumb to push. And then do the same thing on this end, on the 10, push, and I'm done. But I want you guys to do it, so I'm gonna cut these bad boys off and have you strip them. So we wanna strip about a half an inch or a little bit more. A little thumb moves, that's a good trick. There you go. So, whoa, whoa, whoa careful, careful. You have to make sure it's in the groove. You got it between the grooves. It'll cut the wire if you don't have it lined up right. So is that in the 10? Yep. Okay, now squeeze down. There you go. Just like that. Slick as can be, right? And we twist this up so it doesn't get all frayed up. And then we'll go to the other end. What do you guys want here? You want to do this one? So what's this? So that one's all hooked up. What's this little light bulb thingy here on the charge controller? Any idea? So what is this? We talked about a charge controller. It is DC. We talked about a charge controller and what does a charge controller do? Why do I have to have a charge controller between this panel and that battery? So the battery don't overcharge. Yeah, so I don't overcharge the battery, right? What happens if the battery is already fully charged? What's this thing do? Any idea? Doesn't let no power go to the battery? Right, it shuts it off. It says, yeah, no, you're not going there. Well, one of the things I can do is I can put a DC load on here where that little light bulb is. That's just a symbol for a, a DC load. 
and this thing's got a little brain in it and it's going, okay, the battery's full, but the panel's still giving me 19 volts, whatever it is. Um, I, I can either just short out the panels, which is cool, or I can send it somewhere else. And that's called a dump load, and that's what this is. So I could put, what our, what's our goal here? What do we want to do with this panel? We're, uh, we're trying to cool it, right? So we've got water flowing, and that's coming off the battery because we want that to happen no matter what. But could I put like a cooling fan on this? Yeah. I could put a little computer fan that blew on the back of the panel too. So besides water, I could blow air too if I wanted. That way, battery's full. This thing's making too much electricity. I'm pumping water. You know what, we're gonna blow some air on it too. So that thing's kind of handy as an extra it, ca it captures the extra electricity that would just be wasted if the battery's already full. Fired up. That's working good, huh, John? Oh, man, that's great. <laughs> cool PV. What do you think, Keisha? It's pretty cool. Nice. Yeah. So we got the system here recircling. So, JT. JT. Good job, man. Looks great. Tell me a little bit about it. How's this thing working? Well, I guess here we uh, we had to reduce, redesign our top hose up here. First, we just had like the regular hose like this and just drilled holes in it. Yeah. But the flow was too kind of crazy. Uh -huh. So then we had to switch to this plastic and that, that controlled the flow a lot better. Sweet. Yesterday we were testing it and water would just like flow it off the sides. And so Going put, everywhere, huh? Yeah, put a little bead of silicone on it. Nice, right along the edge to and channel it. We drilled uh, fewer, fewer holes and pointed them directly at the... Mm -hmm. And we got our angle changed for this. And Looks like it's pretty that, clean. So don't leak out the back anymore. So. Good job, man. And then to our, uh, our tripod here, you can adjust the angle on it too. Mm -hmm. So you just kind of lift your leg up and just slide it down. Yep. So you can go higher. Get your angle of incidence, huh? Yeah. Very cool, man. Good job. What you getting, man? Can I see it? Sweet. Yeah, it jumps around. Eight, nine. Come on up, up, up. The sun came out too, huh? Yeah. Sweet. <coughs> see ya. Yep. Yeah. You can't wait till it stabilizes, stabilizes a little bit, and then it gets a good reading. Yeah. Right there. Let's say, yeah, let's say yeah. 49.2. Yes. Sweet. Nice. Then how long do you run it? A minute. And then te check it in. Cool, man. Uh, 30 seconds. So you know another issue with photovoltaics is they get dirty. Yeah. And this washes it off, doesn't it? So there's another use for it. Not only and cooling, you can just but. Watch the volts climb as it's cooling. Really? Yeah. Sweet, as she cools down. Very cool. Oh yeah, now me. That's awesome, man. Nice experiment. Still climbing. Here we go, the photovoltaic cooling. Gonna cool the panel, make some hot water. What do you think? Nice. You're gonna have to have her show you how to tighten those wires. How's she doing? 74.1 for the panel, huh? Okay, the water temperature is 25.3. Jim, what was the craziest thing? That yeah, sweet guys, looking good. 
Oh yeah, well, before you do that, actually put markings on the wood on each side of the bracket because we got to put it on the bracket first. We got to put it on the wood Can first. Can I mark where the bracket goes? Line up on the wood. Do exactly what we just finished doing. There you go. The cool PV. Whoa, whoa. Oh, oh, there she goes. Too, 